to a Mobile World Congress. It's not very likely having a Mobile World Congress and having a caffeine show. What are you doing here? Well, we are the Graphene flagship, which is a European research initiative funded by the European Union. Our aim is to take graphene and related 2D materials from the academic laboratories out into the market and into actual products and innovations. We have about 25 of our partners. We have 150 partners in total uh, showcasing what they have done, prototypes where graphene can be incorporated into different application areas such as IoT and sensors, uh, composites and production, datacom, uh, wearables and health and energy. What are you showing here? Okay, this is a prosthetic hand where the electrodes are in graphene. Uh, in fact, the electrodes are here and they can reveal the electrical signal generated from the muscle to obtain a movement of opening and closing. Um, and the idea is for the future to replace traditional electrodes in titanium, avoiding to have all the connection cables and using simple a sensor in graphene which is a simple biocomposite uh, with graphene and cellulose so you can uh, obtain a sensor which is wearable conformable uh, and for the future you can also uh, draw the conductive street directly in the socket uh, and eliminate uh, all these parts uh, that are create scratching on the other to the patient. Can you, see, can you show how accurate it works? Or? What we do is uh, we produce graphene different, using different production methods that we thought uh, can be industrially relevant. So mainly we choose to work with two methods. One is CBD so with that method, chemical vapor deposition, you can grow the purest form of graphene nowadays. Uh, and this material goes mainly to semiconductor industry, to do photo detectors, biosensors, and these kind of devices. And then there is other kind of graphene materials also that can be produced using other methods of production, like chemical exfoliation, Mm -hmm. And you got completely different quality of graphene that can be used for other kind of applications like yeah, yeah. batteries. Can, can, you, can you give an example of what you're having here yeah. on the table? So because here, this is uh, graphene grown by CBD. Uh, growing uh, graphene by CBD uh, have two steps process. So first one is you grow graphene on a copper catalyst. And once you grow it, you have to transfer it into the substrate, working substrate. Okay, this is a good example. This is PET graphene already transferred on it, what you can see is transparent and it's flexible. So you can add conductivity to a material like PET. Okay. Okay. Uh, PET is an example, silicon is another example. Many devices obviously semiconductor are based on, 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 on silicon. So you can have already a device done on silicon and then you can transfer graphene on top of it to add uh, other functional features. Okay, what exactly are you offering here on show? So, we produce graphene powder, okay. um, which you can see in this bottle here. Um, it's a really fine powder, it's basically a one atom thick layer of carbon atoms. And okay. we, we produce this from food waste. So From food waste? Food waste. Uh, so okay. it's a completely green product. Okay. So, um, yeah. Recycling. Okay. And our byproduct is hydrogen, which you can also use for power. So okay. our byproduct can then go into uh, sort of powering buses and, and other fuel cell cars. Yeah. So we have a green product. So this is our green product. Okay. Um, but the product itself is not very useful. We've got to put this product into other um, applications. And what, you, what applications do you have? So our application here that we are showing is a graphene-based heater. You spray the graphene onto any surface. You can see it's flexible, it's very thin, and trust me, it's lightweight. Um, you can turn it on and it heats up quickly. Um, okay. I can show you yep. the thermal camera. Uh, Over there, if we focus, uh, we're getting around 60 degrees or so. Okay. Um, and that heats up and cools down pretty quickly. Um, I'll put my hand on there. Yep. You can see the heat going away. Yep. It has a lot of fun, interesting applications. 
we can do this on a much larger scale so we can coat paintings with our graphene um, paint and you can turn it on from your phone by a Bluetooth yeah. and instead of having big bulky radiators in your house you can then have a, a painting which um, is going to heat up so basically you can, you can use your paintings to heat the house the paintings will heat your house so gone okay. are the days of big bulky radiators um, okay it's a far more beautiful way of heating yeah so this is the same material so yeah. we're using the heater now as a temperature sensor so this is measuring the sort of ambient temperature and when i put it between my hands you can see 31 31 32 degrees so you can have the heater as a temperature sensor you can have the heating and the sensing in the same product essentially so it's the university of cambridge and basically the university of cambridge puts graphene in a shoe so what is graphene doing in a shoe right so basically we have met some sensors uh, with graphene uh, these sensors are pressure sensors flexible and stretchable so it is graphene in a sort of a foam? Absolutely, graphene in sort of a foam and uh, embedded with some rubber, silicone rubber, which makes it uh, pressure sensitive as well as robust. Uh, so we're using it in shoe to demonstrate that it can, it can be used as a sensor in shoe to count footsteps. And since it changes resistance when, when you apply force okay. to it, it can also be used to measure weight, you know, inside the shoe. And so we have embedded this sensor inside the shoe, as you can see here, inside the sole, and it's pressable. So once you wear it, you can use this, like, you know, to uh, do the sensing of your footstep counts or, uh, you know, like the weight measurements and something else as well, like, you know, okay. uh, that can be done in the future. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hi. Hi. So, can you tell you what what, uh, what do we have on display here? Here you can find some objects based on graphene photonics. Graphene this is pro photonics. Yes. My this goodness. Um, <laughs> what is it? That is, what is it? <laughs> rise naturally. Well, graphene photonics, graphene applied in photonics world, do the same thing that we do today in photonics for transmission over fiber, optical fiber, but with uh, graphene, which makes a difference here. Okay. Is it enables uh, the realization of optical interfaces with low dimensions, low power consumption, and uh, temperature insensible, and even low uh, high, high performance for high bit rate. And the objects you will see on the table are made for data com applications and even next generation mobile access networks like 5G. Okay, can you can you show what what we're having? Here we have the first package transmitters mainly based on uh, an optical modulator based on graphene technology. This optical modulator is very low in dimensions, one tenth of millimeters. Okay. Actually, the current capacity of transmission is 10 gigabits, but we aim in one year time to reach up to 100 gigabit per second. So okay. you, you can understand the order of magnitude of, and the interest behind this kind of yeah, object yeah, 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 yeah. at the low cost, because you can transmit in a few centimeters or, or several kilometers with the same objects. Okay. This lower the cost of ownership for this kind of application okay. so that's why we can aim to use them in data comes data center mainly and even in the front hall for 5g uh, applications okay. uh, Aachen University and we're having here an explanation on graphene application what exactly is it here we have a Wi-Fi receiver based on graphene devices which actually has the feature to be able to be integrated on a big variety of substrates among others on very flexible ones like this it's a piece of plastic we have it here uh, on uh, glass and we can in principle put it also on paper and other uh, substrates and yep. the nice thing about graphene is that it is its performance is independent of the substrate and therefore it has good high frequency performance and we can put it virtually everywhere and it opens a and that's also what you're looking for in application because exactly. basically it's a wi-fi receiver 
exactly. Uh, so it's so uh, you know you can have for 2.4 and 2.5 uh, and uh, 2.4 and 5.8 gigahertz. We have circuits working up to 90 gigahertz with this technology. So it spans a lot of uh, application range. Uh, for mobile phones, we have IoT, uh, we have biomedical applications where you can integrate such devices, either put it directly on the skin, put it in your fabric, or maybe even, as one suggested, you swallow it. So there are a lot of uh, nice Well, we're not going to try that today. <laughs> no, not today. <laughs> Definitely okay. not. Excellent. Thank you, Thank you very much. Yeah. Right. We're from Delft, Technical University of Delft, also with a caffeine application. And we're having Santiago here. Yeah, yeah. What exactly are you having on display? Because it is has to do with displays, I think. Yes, indeed. So we are making displays out of graphene. And uh, we have uh, graphene pixels uh, in this uh, monitor. It's real time. We are zooming in really in these uh, tiny pixels of this uh, prototype. Because they are so small with a super large uh, uh, PPI, pixels per, per inch. So basically the graphemes are the pixels. And what yes. is this graphene doing then? I think you have a nice demo. Yeah, we have here a nice video where this simulation shows that the, with the movement, the graphene pixel changes the color. And uh, this is a very low power consumption because you just need to move the, 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 the graphene. Um, it uses uh, the light uh, from the environment, so you don't emit light like a current uh, displays. And uh, also, you can make it very small. So this is, these prototypes already have uh, 850 ppi. That is, uh, uh, if they, they were five inches screen, like a normal smartphone, they would be about uh, four, eight to 12K resolution. Okay. And when do you think, when do you expect this technology will be available in real life applications? Well, I hope that sooner than later. Uh, right now we are in contact with several partners and that might help us to develop further this technology. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.